Hey, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike, and in this video, we're going to do some paint correction. Uh, this is my 2005 Mercedes E55 AMG. Uh, and if you stand back here and look at it, you might think, why would you do paint correction? It looks great. Uh, if so, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, it is the first off, the car is dirty right now, and there are some scratches, light scratches. If I get right up on it, you see underneath the dirt there, you see those fine scratches. That's probably the worst of it, but <clears throat> generally speaking, the car is in really good shape, uh, but it's due for a light paint correction. So first off, I will tell you, I am not a professional detailer. I'm just an avid do-it-yourselfer. Uh, pretty much everything I'm going to show you in this video, I have learned from other people on various channels. Uh, but what I want to do is give you everything in one comprehensive video, kind of sharing all my knowledge. So we're going to go from um, what it is right now. Again, it's kind of dirty. If you notice, like back here, you can see I drove it in a little bit of light rain last time I drove it a week ago. <clears throat> but um, we're going to go through the wash process. We're going to do a, um, a couple of other processes where we're going to prep it for polishing. And then we're going to do a, just a light polish with a DA. Nothing really crazy. It doesn't need a whole lot and then we're going to ceramic coat it as well so with that let's go ahead and get started the first step will be a proper wash okay let me walk you through kind of the steps that i do for the actual basic car wash itself this would obviously apply if you're not doing paint correction just a regular wash um, i always make sure that the car is cool to the touch uh, it's in the shade i live in arizona it gets super hot out here we have crazy hard water so water spots are my biggest enemy and especially on a black car uh, so right now is perfect. That's about 70, 75 degrees out. Um, it's getting towards sunset, so this will be perfect. Um, I use a basic pressure washer. I picked this up off of Amazon for, I think, 150 bucks. I'm using a 25 degree tip. That's important because a lot of pressure washers come with different size tips. You want something that's going to be good to be able to actually get the vehicle clean, but you don't want something too aggressive. The next thing I do is two buckets. These are only used for car washing. They're never used for anything else. So my wife's not putting potting soil in them or things like that. So they stay really clean. Um, one bucket is just filled with water and the other one is filled with soap and water. And then I use a, um, you see the wash mitt I've got in there. It's just a basic wash mitt I picked up off Amazon. <clears throat> the soap that I use is this stuff. Uh, I've had really good luck with this. For me, I'm looking for something that's going to sud, you know, build a lot of a lot of uh, suds, and be effective in cleaning off the car. So this stuff does a great job. So uh, that's kind of the prep. So the first, the very first thing I do is I prep the wheels. I clean the wheels or get ready to clean them. <clears throat> to do that, I use this product. Uh, this is a really good wheel cleaner. It gets off the. Um, all your brake dust and, and all the crap that's on there. Um, and I also, some of you have commented or may have seen, I always transfer all my products into these bottles and I've got a whole bunch of them over here. I label them and that way I can kind of keep things uh, in stock when I'm doing my detailing and then I've got a bunch of overstock here. I also have, these are my rags. We'll go through these in a little bit, but I have a bucket for clean and I have a bucket for dirty. So as soon as something is soiled, it goes in here. And I just run this stuff through the washing machine. You might want to run like a couple of cycles just to make sure the washer doesn't get too dirty, uh, depending on what kind of stuff you're cleaning up with these rags. So, all right. So the, again, the first step is going to be just taking this product. I'm going to spray it on the wheels. And um, it's pretty cool. If you've never used this, it's got a um a chemical in it that will turn the metal particles it's basically a uh a chemical that'll turn the metal particles purple so as you spray this on i get it on the brakes as well you will notice we'll come back to this in a few minutes and you'll see where this whole thing is going to be purple that's a good indication that we're getting rid of the metal um kind of the metal byproducts that come off the brakes. You can already see it there on the caliper or on the rotor. Okay, you can see the iron remover there turning the iron particles uh, purple and getting rid of them. Um, that's the uh, product showing that it is working. I just let this dwell, which basically means just put it on there and let it sit. Uh, you can use a brush to agitate it. Um, I don't really find that I need to. When I go to wipe down the car and dry it, I'll detail the wheels and by then they're really clean. So now I'm gonna start with rinsing the car off. 
<clears throat> when it comes to the actual wash, again, it's pretty basic. Here's what I've learned over the years of doing a bunch of different cars. You always want to start from the top down, right? So I always want to, you know, get my pressure washer here and then work my way to the bottom. And the bottom line is touch the car as, as the least you possibly can. When you touch the car, you are scratching it to some degree. It doesn't matter how good the product is or whatever. So the objective is to get it as clean as you can with the least amount of touching. So the first thing I do is I'll grab the pressure washer. And again, I'm just going to wipe or um, rinse the whole car down from the top down. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. When I'm over here with the pressure washer as well, uh, again, I'm doing the top down, but I'm, I'm fine with doing in, in the barrels of the wheels, doing the entire wheels up in the wheel wells really getting rid of as much dirt as I possibly can. Even kind of reaching at an angle, like underneath the car to get just underneath the rocker panel area. I make sure that I'm washing in where the brake pads themselves are, uh, just to get any dust out of there. So you can see the color of the water down in the barrel of the wheel. I keep doing that until it comes out clean. Just keep working it. Not gonna hurt anything. Again, I get right up in the wheel wells. This car's pretty low, so it's it's a little bit trickier to get in there. But uh, again, just rinsing it as best I can. For a little attention to detail, I always uh, open up the gas door and do in that area as well. One other thing that I like to do, and this might be a little controversial, is I open up the door and I very carefully clean, I pressure wash right in that door jam area and down the sill and on the bottom of the door as well. Obviously not on the upholstery. Uh, and then the metal over here as well. Just to get everything clean, I'll properly dry it later. But uh, if you notice, that's dirty. My door, uh, this car's 20 years old and the car is in, it looks really, really nice. It shows great when it's all cleaned up. So, all right, let's keep going. All right, at this point, I got the car all rinsed off. Unfortunately, the sun's peeking through the clouds, but it's uh, setting here. So it's not, uh, it shouldn't be an issue and it's cool enough where it won't be an issue. You really want to watch out for water drying on the car again especially in my case here in arizona all right the next thing i'm going to use is what is called a soap cannon uh or a foam cannon you may have seen these again available on amazon or ebay or whatever and basically this will allow you to spray uh soapy foam uh water onto the car this attaches onto your pressure washer and uh let me go ahead and get this hooked up and i'll show you how it works Okay, they tell you when you get these uh, cannons to put a certain proportion, I forget what it is, of soap versus water. I go with way more soap than they suggest uh, because I get a lot more lather out of it and it tends to dwell and last a little bit longer. There's also a couple of adjustments here. Uh, and as you pull the trigger, you'll see this is your pressure and then this is kind of how wide it sprays. Um, once again, I want to do top down. So I'm going to start on the roof, kind of go that way. And then you'll see this basically drip off the car and that's the whole purpose it's going to when it drips off it's going to pull the dirt with it so i don't have to touch it right so what i normally do is start out here and do the roof Under this side, you can see this as well. Again, I get right on the wheels and the wheel wells anywhere I can. Notice it's kind of dripping off the car and that's pulling the dirt with it. All right, so now I'll do the rest of the car. If the car's really dirty, I might do this twice. And then you're gonna recognize, you can hear it and see it dripping off the car. You're gonna recognize when it gets to the point where you wanna hit it with water again. The step after this is gonna be another rinse with the pressure washer. Again, I still haven't touched the car and we're getting rid of a lot of dirt. So let me continue doing this and I'll check in with you in just a moment. All right, I'm in better shape with the sun. It's kind of tucking behind the trees and going into the 
behind the clouds a bit more. So again, you can see it just drawing that dirt off the car and I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Once you do this a few times, um, you kind of recognize again when you want to rinse it. You want to have as much soap come off as possible, but not for the car to, to dry, right? Um, also, in case you're wondering, when I do a like a good proper wash like this, a hand wash, it'll probably take me from the time I get the stuff out until I'm done and, you know, drying, detailing and all of that, maybe an hour tops. And it's a really good clean. I never ever bring my cars through car washes. Uh, we call those scratch tunnels around here. So um, they're just gonna wreck your paint. Uh, maybe a touchless one would be okay, but it's never gonna get as clean as you can by hand. So, all right, let me go ahead and rinse this here in just a couple of minutes and we'll move to the next step. Actually, before we rinse, I wanna show you, this is about the way I get it. You can see it's not really dripping off anymore. Now it's just gonna dry in place and make more of a mess. So this is what I know I'm ready to start rinsing. Once again, when I rinse, it's always gonna be, anytime I'm putting water on the car, it's always from the top down. Yeah, I'll bring you along for the rinse part. Pretty straightforward, but again, I'm gonna keep this, I, I like keeping the hose over my shoulder because I don't want it to touch the car and scratch the car. <laughs> Keep doing the rest of the car we'll see how it looks okay we are looking really clean and i have not touched the car uh this again is it's a little bit unfair i don't drive this car terribly often uh it's kind of a show car more or less at this point um and it does have a really good ceramic coat on it that's going to be part of the magic that's going to allow the car to clean this easily um you may have heard that about good coatings but from my experience, I would agree that if the car is not hyperbolic, meaning you know it beads up and things don't stick to it, um, if that's not the case, it makes it really hard to clean. And again, you can see if you look, you know, I could dry this thing and the thing's got a great shine, but we're gonna we're gonna give it some paint correction and make it even better. So, all right, at this point, we are going to move on to using the wash mitt. And basically, for this, <clears throat> all I do is take the wash mitt dunk it into my soap i do not use a um some guys or gals use a grit guard it's called i don't use one of those probably one of the most important things here once again i'm sick of hearing myself say it top down you don't want to go in circles that's going to help to make swirls i basically just keep a nice light pressure and just move it back and forth like this i'll do an area and again the car's very clean right now but i'll do maybe let's say this half of the hood or the roof, excuse me. And then I'll bring it back over to my rinse bucket, rinse it in my rinse bucket here, kind of squeeze it out to make sure if there is any contaminants or dirt, I get them out back into my soap and continue the process. Um, you don't want to let this dry either. So if you do need to work in sections, go ahead and do that. Um, and then just keep the car wet. Um, it really is gonna depend on how hot it is where you are. So, all right, I'm gonna keep, keep uh, going along and get the rest of it uh, rinsed or uh, soaked off here with the wash bit. Here's one other thing too, as I'm doing this, I kind of break the car into like quadrants. That way I make sure I don't do anything or I don't skip any spots, right? So now I've moved on to the windshield. I'm gonna do the windshield, uh, then the mirror. I like to go, you know, from the windows up in this section and again i'll do this area and then get back here and then i'll go ahead and uh i could do here the glass is far less you know you're not going to scratch the glass that badly um you're mainly worried about contaminants on the paint you know and stuff that's in your wash mitt getting on to the paint and scratching the paint so all right keep going on this part 
For me, once I get this whole kind of bubble of the car area done, I go directly to the hood next because the hood is likely where you're gonna see scratches when you walk up in a car. Um, the more time you spend with the wash mitt moving around the car, the more dirt and debris you're gonna have on it. So um, doing the hood right after you do this area is gonna minimize the amount of dirt you've got in there and therefore the scratches. Here's another pro tip. As I'm going along and doing these areas, so I've done the whole front nose of the car, but I didn't go below that body line. That is where the majority of my dirt's gonna be, right all down along the bottom, and especially the dirt I showed you when I first started the video. So what I do is I'll do the entire car down to that body line, and then I'll do from that body line down very last. Again, maintaining the least amount of dirt in the washman as possible. So at this point, I've done uh, the wash mitt on the car from the body line up. I'm going to give it a quick rinse just to make sure nothing dries, and then I'll do that part, and then we'll be able to go to the next step. All right, gave the car a really good final rinse. If this was just going to be a regular wash, at this point, I would start the drying process. Uh, but because I'm doing a paint correction on this, the next thing we want to do is decontaminate the paint with an iron remover. So much like I showed you with the wheels, uh, where they turn purple, I've got a product here I'll show you in just a second that I'm gonna spray over the entire car after I've washed it while it's still damp, and that's gonna help in uh, removing metal particles out of the paint. Okay, for this step, I'm using this Adams iron remover. I haven't tried this product yet. Uh, I've used that um, iron remover before, but other brands, I couldn't find the stuff I used to use, so I'm gonna give this a shot, and again, I just wanna, spray the entire car down and uh, let it dwell for probably 15 minutes or so, give it a good rinse, and then we'll be able to pull the car inside, which is good because it's getting dark out. Um, and then we'll go on to the next uh, phase after that. This is pretty straightforward, nothing to it. I'm just spritzing the whole car down. Again, I've already done the wheels with an iron remover, so those should be fine. Um, you would not believe how much iron you can get built into the paint. Brake dust, uh, so brake dust is basically, a lot of it can be metal particles that are very hot, and when they hit the clear coat, they embed themselves into the clear coat. And what this does is basically eat away the iron and remove it. The last thing we want when we go to the polishing process is to have little tiny pieces of metal in there that we're swirling around with an electronic pad, right? So. I'm going to just do this so around the entire car. Again, let it dwell and just roll off the car. You can see it doing that now. In some cases, depending on the color of the car, you will see the car to kind of turn purple, just like you did the wheels. Uh, I won't because the car is black. You might see a little bit here and there. But again, I'll just give this a good rinse, and then I'll pull the car. Well, we'll dry it next, and then we'll talk about that. Okay, the whole car is sprayed down. I used... This thing was full, so I used the better part of this bottle. I forget how many. This is uh, 32 ounces, so I probably used, whatever, 25 ounces or so. I do a lot of this stuff. I'm not afraid to pile it on there. Um, and at this point, again, uh, you don't want to touch it. That would be the last thing you'd want to do right now because we've got metal that could be kind of coming loose. Um, and we don't want to run that through the paint and make it any worse. Um, fun fact too, uh, even brand new cars that are delivered by train get a ton of metal in them from the rail dust, from the railroad dust, from the, um, the train cars. So, uh, most, I think now these days are being, uh, delivered on a, on a covered car, you know, if they're on a train, but if you ever see cars out on a train car, they're going to be their paint's gonna be in rough shape right out of the gate. So, all right, I'll let this dwell a little bit longer. Again, I wanna let it dwell as long as I can without it drying. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and give the car a really good rinse and then we'll talk about drying. Okay, it is uh, properly dark out. So I have moved the car into the garage. Uh, my wife's not around, so I uh, she's out for the night. So I used uh, her side of the garage, which has a little bit more room than mine. I've got a bunch of junk over there and uh, other cars. If you've been watching the channel, that's a really cool project. Check that out. It's ca uh, called Car Misa. Really nice audio system going into that thing. Legendary. Um, all right. So at this point, we need to dry the car. Once again, the same rule applies. The least I can touch it, the better. couple different schools of thought here. I use a leaf blower uh, quite often. Um, and just a, I've got just one from Harbor Freight, plugs into the wall. I'll use that, run around. That does a really good job of getting into the headlight areas and all the nooks and crannies where the water would otherwise kind of sit and then it drips and you end up with water spots all over the place. So 
Um, I'll do a combination of that and then I've got a really nice drawing towel. So let me grab that, I'll show you the process. Okay, to determine how much I'm gonna do uh, with a leaf blower versus using the drying towel, depends on how hot it is. I just wanna make sure I touch the car the least I possibly can, but I get it dry and I don't have water spots. That's kind of the name of the game as far as I'm concerned with drying. Right now, I've got a total luxury here because again, it's 75 degrees. I've got all the time in the world. When it's 115, 120 degrees, I've got about two minutes and then the car is dry. So. Uh, this is the drying towel I use. It is amazing. Um, shout out to Legit Street Cars. Alex Plumeri turned me on to this. Uh, check out his channel if you have not already. A lot of really good content. It's where I've learned a lot about uh, different things that you'll see that I'm doing on cars, especially the Mer Mercedes cars. So um, definitely the best drying towel I've ever used. So again, the first thing I'm going to do, I'll hit it with a leaf blower. I'll go around and get as much as I can, and then I'll go around with the drying towel, finish up, and that should get it dry. So I'll show you. This is the leaf blower. I'm cheap, Team Harbor Freight, so it's nothing crazy. Uh, once again, I'll do top down just because water, gravity, dripping, all that. Uh, and it's pretty straightforward. Let me actually turn this garage light on. Overhead light. All right, here we go. Pretty simple, not, not much to it. Uh, you want to be careful not to drag the cord over the paint. Uh, and with a nice, good, proper, uh, once you do a paint correction and a ceramic coat, at that point, you really, you could probably get away with almost not even touching the car to dry it uh, because, you know, it beads so well. So, all right, let me go ahead and get it uh, leaf blown and I'll run around with my drying towel and we'll get the car nice and dry. Okay, got most of the water off with the um, shop vac. And now I'm gonna use my drying towel. With the drying towel, again, I wash this with all of my other rags. I wash this every single time I dry a car because again, there could be contaminants on the rag and I wanna make sure it's clean. This, you wanna be careful. You don't wanna wrap it up in a ball and get in there and, and go like that. It'll be aggressive on the paint. So what I do is just take it like this, drape it, and just kinda of pull it. And if, if I was doing this when it was super hot out, this is, I would go right to this step and then I would leaf blow after. This just does a really nice job, just the weight of the towel. You know, once you're done, if you've got to reach areas that you can't reach, obviously you can you know, grab it as you need to, but it does, it wicks up. I can do the entire car without wringing this thing out. I don't even know how it holds all the water. It's incredible. All right, so let me go ahead and get the rest of this uh, wiped off. We'll go to the next step. So thought of another quick pro tip. Make sure this does not hit the ground. If it hits the ground, it's dirty, uh, really dirty. Uh, even in a, in a garage, you're gonna have a bunch of dust and dirt, so be careful of that. For the final drying, I do a combination of the leaf blower and then I just grab a smaller um, microfiber. And these are, I've, I've got different microfibers I use for different applications. These are nice, I can probably put the link in the uh, description. Uh, they're a little bit thicker. I get these off Amazon, but again, Alex sells them too. He probably has better ones on his website. So I'm just going to kind of leaf blow and then kind of chase it with the rag. <laughs> That's the name of the game here. All right, let me get this the rest of this part done. Show you something pretty interesting about black cars. Um, got it all dry. Car looks really good, right? Finish is not bad. Um, it's really, really deceptive depending on the light that's hitting it. Again, like looking down the side of the car, it looks really good. 
Fluorescent lights, by the way, which is what I have in the garage. Um, those and certain LEDs are the most telling. If we look at the car, see the, see the scratches there? I live on a gravel road that's uh, about a half mile long. So it's brutal to try to keep the finish nice on any car. It's not bad, as you can see. Um, we've got, this is probably just some dust. We may have some very, very small chips, and I'll show you what we're gonna do about those. But um, you can see, see the top of the fender there? You can see it's got some, see the scratches there? That's the stuff we're gonna remove. And again, I've, I don't know how many miles, I've probably put 5,000, maybe 10,000 miles on the car since the last time I did a paint correction. We got a pretty good size um, chip. It's actually one that I've touched up, but you can still see it. Uh, so, all right, so now at this point, we're gonna go on to a clay mitt, which is gonna be the next thing to remove the contaminants. Uh, so basically the remaining steps are gonna be clay mitt. Um, then we're gonna do some touch-ups to show you what I do there. And then we're going to polish and then ceramic coat, and then we'll have it wrapped up. Um, again, this is just a I'll consider this a quick job. This isn't anything where I'm going super, super crazy. I'm not using um, multiple compounds, things like that. The car's not in bad shape. I just wanna get it better. So, all right, let's keep going. If you've been watching the video for this long, I'll give you a little uh, little treat here in the jewelry box, if you will. Um, I did some lights in the engine bay of this car, and I also uh, painted the entire top of the motor there. Um, if you've been watching my channel, I did the same thing on my C32, um, and I'll do a proper kind of a introduction video for this car in the near future. How do you know you're OCD when you mop your garage floor? All right, I decided to move the car back to my side. The lighting is better over here. Uh, and again, you can see, you know, it's a, what do you call it? A five footer, a 10 footer. Stand back here, you know, it looks, looks like glass. It looks great. But when you get up on it, again, it might be tough to see with this light. You can definitely see imperfections. And it won't take much. It won't take much of a buff for us to be able to get it kind of cleaned up. And it'll come out real nice. There's a spot. Yeah, I don't know what happened there, but like that's some pretty serious scratches. Not, I mean, they're not bad at all. They'll come right out with a light buff. You can see it in there too. But we'll be able to get that when we're right up on it. It'll look like glass. So, all right, let's go to the next step, which is going to be the clay mitt. Okay, before we go to the clay step, um, here's something you can check. So I, you saw me just wash the car. I washed the heck out of the car, did the uh, metal decontaminant, the iron decontaminant. But even so, and the car looks really good, right? You hear that? That is all crap that is stuck to the paint. So the clay is going to remove that and get us ready to prep to polish. All right, <clears throat> let me show you what we got going on here. This is the clay mitt. I have never used a clay mitt. I've always used a clay bar. I just tested this thing and it is awesome. A uh, huge time saver compared to the clay bar. And I always had an issue with a clay bar sticking uh, to the car. I had to use tons of uh, detailer. I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but it just, I've always had issues with it. This is so much better. I just tried a little tiny spot on the car and I love it. So uh, I did get this from Legit Street Cars. Again, shout out to Alex. Check out his website. He's got these things on sale. He's got bundles where you can buy foam cannons and drying towels and all kinds of great stuff. So again, props to uh, Legit Street Cars for that. Um, so when you're doing any kind of either clay bar or wash mint, they're gonna basically work the same way. You wanna use some kind of a detailer. So I like Meguiar's personally. So I use Meguiar's Quick Detailer. Again, I always, buy a you know few of these things and then I'll uh, put it into a bulk bottle like this and then what you're going to do is spray a bunch of this on a particular section run the clay mitt over it and then use your drying towel to dry it up making sure again that this is clean and just work section by section so let me show you how I do this on the car all right so let me show you the process here um, the same rule applies with the clay bar um, mitt, the clay mitt. If you drop this thing in the ground, uh, I don't know what you would do because it's it's kind of tacky. Uh, don't do that, I guess. I don't, I'll have to research and see if you can wash these things. I don't know how that works. Um, or if you just throw it away when you're done. All right, so what I'm gonna do again, and I just researched some other people doing this. 
Um, and know from my experience of using a clay bar, you want to put a liberal, liberal amount of detailer on there. And I could hear it and feel the contaminants. And you want to be careful. I found, I kind of played around a little bit before I did this on camera. Um, you can feel it's really tacky. So you want to be really careful with light pressure. You don't want to go crazy with it. So let's do, I didn't do the infamous tape line, but I can feel this. Definitely want to be careful not to get it on the tire and, you know, grab any dirt or whatever that's on the, the tire. I can feel it getting better. So let's go ahead and do this. Also, I researched that <clears throat> um, it's a really good idea to make sure that you are gonna polish after doing, especially a clay mitt, because it's a little, it can be a little bit more aggressive than a clay bar, which again is what we have uh, scheduled for this video. So again, I'll take my, my mitt. What I like doing too, even on these um, uh, microfibers, this particular one that I use has got a, kind of a, a flatter, surface and then more of like a furry surface if you will i normally dry with a flatter surface like this right get get rid of that and then i'll uh flip it over and then do my final wipe with the fluffier especially when i you know wiping the car down in detail guys i can even see i don't know if this should happen but i can see a difference the paint is shining better um it looks deeper just from doing the clay bar so notice no sound and I can feel it's very smooth compared to, hear that? See the difference there? And that's gonna be, that's gonna give us a really nice surface to be able to um, add our polish onto and we're not gonna be taking all the contaminants and swirling it around with the, with the polisher. So at this point, I'm gonna go through and do the entire car. And by the way, I'm also using a headlamp. How's it going? Um, when I'm doing things like this, I like to be able to do, use a headlamp to be able to see. It's just an LED headlamp, and I also have a little LED flashlight. So if I really want to take a good look at something, this is about as telling as it's going to get. You're really going to see the good, the bad, the ugly when you start doing this. So, all right, I'm going to go to work here and get the whole entire car clay mitted, and we'll get that, do the exact same process for the whole entire car. Okay, I'm a huge fan of this clay mitt. It took me about, I don't know, five or six minutes to do the entire roof. And again, we haven't polished yet. I swear the finish looks better, probably because I'm pulling a bunch of contaminants out. And again, it's nice and smooth. I even did the glass. I would do, I, I don't think there's any issue doing the glass. And you can, you can hear or not hear. There's no noise there. Over here, I didn't do. And you can tell there's a lot of, I can feel all the crap up that's still in the paint here. So huge fan. I'll never use another clay bar again. I'm sold on clay mitts. All right. Clay mitt complete on the entire car. Super, super impressed with this product. Uh, again, legit street cars. Check out their website. Um, Alex has an incredible channel. Again, that's where I learned a lot of this stuff. Kind of gave me the inspiration to do things I wouldn't have otherwise done, like pull off the supercharger on my on this car, the E55. So check them out. Um, already, though, you can see, I, I don't know if you can tell a difference looking at the car, but I certainly can in person. It really looks deeper, cleaner, better shine, and that's, that's not even polishing it. So tomorrow night, we're going to polish, uh, do some light stone chip uh, touch-ups. I had the whole the whole bumper uh, and the front lip and the grill were repainted and I drove the car once since then. I drove it once since August, it's now the end of March. So that is, is basically in really good shape. There are a few stone chips here and there, just a handful and I'll show you my process for that. And then we're going to polish and we'll then we'll clean it with a isopropyl alcohol. We'll do the ceramic coat, final detail, and then I'll even probably get some footage. I'm going to a, so right now it's Thursday evening. Um, Saturday morning, there is a Cars and Coffee at a local uh, Mercedes dealership. So I'm trying to get the car kind of cleaned up for that. So um, that'll be it for tonight. We'll hit it hard in the morning and, or tomorrow evening uh, after work, and we'll continue the video. Okay, it's the next day, uh, the evening of the next day. I uh, went around the car, took a good look, just double check to make sure everything is good with a clay mitt. Um, 
awesome results for that. And again, guys, I can't tell you how much I'm totally impressed with that. Really made a big difference. The system is really nice and smooth. Um, and that's going to make a big difference when we go to the next step. So the next step is polishing. Um, I will reiterate, I'm a complete hobbyist do-it-yourselfer. I'm not a pro by any means. Uh, so take what I'm saying with some care. Do your own research, so on and so forth. <clears throat> what I want to explain to you is the two different types of machines that are available to do buffing on a car. The first is called a rotary, which is this. This, if you notice, just basically spins. That's all it does. If I was to plug it in, hit the trigger, this thing spins. It's variable speed. This is a really good quality unit. It's a Makita. It's pretty rough, but it's been used a lot through the years. It's variable speed, and here you can see the RPMs relative to the speed level as seen here. This is intended for heavy cutting. So if you've ever heard the term cut and buff, um, after a car is wet sanded, like if it was just painted, um, <clears throat> this machine would likely be used to, to get rid of the most deep uh, imperfections or scratches. It normally is followed up by this machine. This is called the DA, all right? And uh, this is just a cheap, another yet another cheap Amazon. Um, it's under $100 I paid for this thing and it works fine. This basically oscillates back and forth. It can rotate, but it's not, it's not gonna, it's kind of freewheel rotate. Whereas this one, as you can hear there, it's got a motor that spins it. <coughs> Excuse me. So this one is meant for lighter work. This is really good, especially on black cars to get rid of swirls. Uh, you've got to be a really good um, detailer to be able to take this and get a final finish, especially on a black car. Swirls are really, really, you know, bad on a black car. And this thing does an amazing job of removing swirls. So those are the two different types of machine. Next thing we have is the compounds themselves. What I like personally is Meguiar's products. Um, these are the two most common that I use. There's one other one called a dual action. It's kind of an old school um, product. I don't use that as much anymore. If you notice on the Meguiar products, very simple. They have a little arrow here, a little chart to tell you how much of a cut it will be, how aggressive it will be. So this is going to be an ultra cut compound. This would be really aggressive. Um, for those of you who follow my channel, I have the C32. I'll probably use this for the C32 because the car was never, it was never finished off after the majority of it was painted, right? So this is real aggressive. Again, on the E55, we just need a light polish. This product, the 205, is a really good light polish. I've had really good results with this. So this is what we're gonna use. Now, with the DA, there are different color pads available. Uh, same is true with the rotary. Um, you can use the same pads for either. And the color of the pad indicates the cut. So the pad basically will determine to some degree also how aggressive the, the cutting will be, right? So anytime you're polishing, you're removing some of the clear coat, right? So the objective here, kind of like washing, is to remove the least amount to get the finish you're looking for. Um, this, the orange pad is kind of a medium cut. Um, yellow would be an example, or a white would be a more aggressive cut. Black would be a lighter polish. Generally speaking, from what I can tell, um, the, the, uh, sponginess of the pad has to do with how much of a cut it is. So this has got, you know, you can see that it's got a little bit of give, but a black pad, for example, would be really, really light, right? Really easy to push down on this. If I push down on it, there's not a ton of give, right? Um, it's going to depend on the car and the, the finish and all that. Mercedes is known for having a really, really hard clear coat. So that's why I'm going to go, I'll start with the orange pad. We'll see how it goes. Um, but I'm thinking that that's probably what I'm going to need. We also have, and I've also got, um, these little accessories. So after I do the entire car with the pad, I'll have little areas such as like, this is pretty, this is an area that it's really tough to get into. Right. And I want to be careful here. I don't want to put the machine up against here and scratch the mirror. So on these smaller little detailed areas that are harder to get, I'll go in and I'll use like the cone and I could just put this on a drill and just be really careful, slow speed. <clears throat> and then I have this attachment as well. And I've got the other attachment for these smaller pads. And then I've got just this assortment of little pads. I got this off of Amazon as well. But again, really good to get into the small detailed areas. This will be a, a rotary, right? Obviously, if I put this into a drill, it's going to be spinning. So you want to be really careful, go nice and slow with the speed. Um, if you're wanting to get really crazy, 
you can get into things like this, which is a uh, depth gauge, a thickness gauge. So this allows you to, let me go over here to the car. I can measure the thickness of the paint on the car. Should be, and this, there's a very um, variable different number of units. Um, this I think is the microns, which is the most, most common. So you can see the hood on this car has been resprayed. There we go. And it's, it's sort of between 150 and 200 microns, I believe is the correct. You can see that. But if I go up here to the roof where it gets a lot of sun exposure, this was not repainted. This is about a hundred. It's gonna make a liar out of me. <laughs> or if we were to try, that's pretty thick. I remember checking this cause I'll explain why in just a sec. There, are, there you go. Perfect, right on the dot, right? A hundred. So this is going to a really good professional detailer will use one of these to gauge how deep they can go with their cut. You don't want to go, I don't think you want to go below 100. That's kind of, from what I've read, that's kind of the safe area. Now, this car has, you know, again, if I stand back here, it looks awesome, right? We haven't polished it yet. But if you get really close to it, you can see it's got some orange peel, right? There's some dust on there. Um, there you go. You can see the orange peel there. See that red reflection? And the red is kind of distorted. You see that? You can see my reflection in there as well. That is what's called orange peel. So that is an imperfection in the paint, the way that the paint was, was laid down. Mercedes has, certain Mercedes have orange peel, uh, and that's the way it is. I think I've basically accepted that, and I'm fine with it. But again, if you wanted to, you could cut this, you could wet sand this down until it's flat, and then you would go with your rotary and then your DA and so on and so forth, and you'd use your depth gauge. So, all right, so that's kind of a little bit of a education on that part there. So what I'm going to do at this point, we'll get the DA set up with the orange pad. We'll get our 205. Uh, we'll do kind of some practice areas, uh, probably on like the trunk lid, and we'll see how that is going to cut, and we'll um, go from there. So give me just a sec, I'll get that set up. All right, a couple things before we get started. Um, what I would do, I always have a detailing uh, cloth, just a um, microfiber, and I want to wipe down the area that I'm going to do because, again, I'm, especially me, I'm in Arizona, and the dust out here is ridiculous. So we'll start out with the trunk lid. Uh, I'll go ahead and do that. And then the next thing we want to do is prime the pad. So the first time you're using the pad, um, you want to put probably six to eight dots, maybe dime-sized dots, on the pad itself and then kind of take your hand and kind of kind of brush them. So give me just a sec, I'll show you that. Okay, uh, so, sorry, my neighbors are playing ping pong in their garage. Um, so you can see I've got that. That's probably, you're gonna put more on the first time you do it. You won't do as, uh, as much as you go. One other thing too, make sure that you take, I took compressed air and blew the pad off. This pad is brand new, never used. I just took it out of the package, but you always wanna blow that off to make sure there's no contaminants. Then I just take it and just kind of go like this, just to kind of work it in. Um, there's a couple of different schools of thought. You can put the, the product on the car itself and then do it, but most people that I've seen are gonna always put it on the pad first. Once again, I'm always gonna take the wire, and if you notice, I've got it up over my shoulder. Uh, now, when you do your, your, you know, your actual polishing, break it into like two foot by two foot sections. So I'm going to use like I've got the defroster lines, these vertical bars. I'll, I'll kind of take the trunk and break it, into, break it into like three different sections. So I'll go ahead and get started with that. things there if you noticed I did a pattern basically where you're gonna go this way and then go back over this way so the you know kind of the opposite pattern notice too I'm not putting a lot of pressure I just pretty much use the weight of the machine and then control it uh, and that should be it 
Uh, if you're doing an aggressive cut, you want to be really careful getting up against things like this, this trunk lip, or on edges. That's that's uh, especially your hard body lines like this body line. You you could really do some damage if you're using an aggressive cut, an aggressive pad, especially with a rotary buffer. You 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 do what's called burn through the paint. Doing something like this with a light polish and a DA, uh, it really it's it's very unlikely you're going to do any kind of damage. So. Let me go ahead and wipe this off. We'll take a look, see what that looks like. All right, I'll reiterate, this car is not that bad. You'll probably see more in the hood. When I get to that point, I'll show you. Um, so you're probably not gonna see a big difference, if any difference. I know there's some guys that'll do like, a, you know, put a piece of tape and do one side and not the other and pull the tape off. And it's this, you know, looks like an, what I call an ice skating rink where it's all scratches and horrible and then it's nice and polished. Um, this car was not that bad, but I can assure you that the area that I did came out really, really nice. So we had a really nice proper finish, super, super smooth. It's like glass. Um, and that's what we need. So at this point, I'm going to go around and do the entire car. When I find some areas that I think are a little bit more representative of a cleanup, I'll go ahead and show you those. Here's another thing I've seen too. So you don't have to do a new um, application of polish for every section, but what I will see some guys do is apply it like this, and then before turning on the power, kind of smear it around like that, and then run the machine and just kind of work that section. Okay, as you do each section, you can see I did this section, and again, I'm using like that line and that line. Just find places in the car that can uh, allow you to determine kind of a roughly a two foot by two foot section. And then what I'll do is I'll polish the section and then I'll wipe it down. Again, I'm using a brand new microfiber um, or freshly washed microfiber here. Um, and I'll wipe that down, then I'll do the next part, so on and so forth. So you don't, this way I know exactly where I've been. I can inspect it before I go to the next spot. If I see an imperfection, I can work on that if I need to. Okay, so here's the hood. And this again, I don't know what happened here, but you can see where they're, see the, in the reflection of the flashlight, kind of the uh, swirls and the scratches there. Let me go back to the trunk, show you that. So here we are, get this focused, on the trunk. And if you notice, there were swirls back here too, but uh, they're gone. This, the DA with this, you know, in my case, the orange pad and that, that product from Meguiar's does a really nice job. There are no swirls, it looks really, really good. So uh, again, I'll just keep uh, keep working on the car. That's a piece of dust. <laughs> again, I live in Arizona. All right, one other quick thing too. If you're doing more of an aggressive heavy cut, you'll see a lot of detailers do this where they're just getting a, an idea of the temperature. You can burn the paint, even a flat surface, if you go too aggressive and you stay in a spot too long, uh, the temperature gets too high and you'll actually melt the paint. So be really careful there. Here's another helpful tip. You want to try to keep the pad as clean as possible so you can see I've got some uh, some dirt on there despite us going through and doing the decontamination. So I just take compressed air. Like that. It also gets the extra compound off. All right, we'll continue on. As I do a section, what I'm doing too is bringing in a fluorescent light or a uh, LED light, <laughs> piece of dust, and just going around and making sure everything looks really good. And again, more dust. Um, and it's not uncommon to see areas. I saw areas where there was still some small scratches and I came back and hit it. So, you, you know, normally you find those things when the sun's hitting it, when you're standing at a car show and it kind of pisses you off or whatever. So that might be helpful. Okay, making good progress on the uh, polishing, coming out really nice. <clears throat> As I go through and do each section, I'm gonna identify any stone chips. This is one that I've got. Um, if you don't have a whole bunch of stone chips, this is kind of a good way to do it. I'm going to kind of label these as I go. And again, once we get done with the polishing, I'll show you how I deal with this, the uh, any kind of chips. All right, I'm cruising along, uh, making good progress. If you notice at this point, I've got a headlamp on. Um, that's going to really allow me to see things in the paint. And also for areas like this, I've got the trunk lid open. Uh, one thing I didn't mention also is, and you can see there's, that's just uh, smudge. Um, 
I do the glass too. Um, I find, again, I've got a lot of water stains out here and when I do the glass with the polisher, it cleans it up as well. I noticed my pad was getting pretty dirty, so I rinsed it off with some warm water and then uh, hit it with the air compressor and then turned on the DA and continued to hit it with the air compressor until it's dry. So um, you may want to do that just to make sure it doesn't get too dirty as you are polishing. All right, I caved in and did the old tape trick. So this is the before, and I got a light on it now so you can really see the scratches. See that line right there? That's where I had the tape. And this is the after. And you can see I did, see right there the difference? Especially right in here, it's, for some reason, again, on the hood, it, it was pretty bad. But that light compound really does a nice job. And I did that section there. And uh, yeah, really looks good. So I'm almost done. Let me knock out the rest of this. Just have the hood of the front bumper and then the polishing will be done. Polishing is done. Not bad. I'm very happy with the results. Um, I need to keep in perspective this car, with the exception of the hood and the grill and the front bumper and that little lip, it's all original paint. The car is 20 years old. I live on a gravel road. It's black, so it shows everything. But all in all, it came out really nice. <clears throat> if you're keeping track, um, so last night when I started the video, did the wash and the uh, iron remover and the wash, the clay wash, mitt, all that. Um, that was about four hours. Today, I probably spent close to four hours on the polishing. Um, piece of dust there, as you can see. Um, again, it's not perfect, but it's, it's really nice. It's a lot better than it was, um, which is what I was after. So at this point, only a couple of steps left for what I would consider to be kind of a complete paint correction. The next step is probably the one that I would consider to be most overlooked. Every time I've watched videos of people doing paint correction, this is the one thing I never see, and that is touch-ups. Um, you can polish it and buff it and do all that, but if it's got stone chips and, and all that, it's gonna look, not look like a new car. This car, again, as I mentioned, the front bumper, grill, uh, were recently painted, so there's nothing going on there. The hood doesn't have any chips um, that are, you know, kind of visible. And there are a couple chips here and there. You can see, uh, where are they? Very small. See that? There is one right here. And there's the one up here. I showed you earlier. Little tiny chips like this. To me, that's like the last 2%, but it makes all the difference. So I'm gonna to touch those up. Now, a couple of different ways you can do this. You can use, you know, the touch up paint in a bottle with the giant um, brush that they give you. That's gonna leave a giant blob. So two different schools of thought that I've done here. I have the paint mixed from a body shop for this, I brought, you know, the paint coat in and got the right code. Um, you can use that with a toothpick. That's what I normally do. I'll dip it in a toothpick and then just dot it on that very carefully. Um, or you can use um, some a product called Dr. Color Chip. Um, pretty controversial. I'm sure some people say, oh, that's, you know, it's hocus pocus. It doesn't work. Depending on the color of the car. I've done it on several cars. On this car, it is incredible. I did a decent amount of stone chips on the hood and you really can't tell. There's a couple of big ones, like those two right there, but they're filled in and you really can't see them. In a later video, I will work on filling these in and then knocking them down and, and polishing those. But uh, I've got a, a meet tomorrow, or cars and coffee in the morning and it's 10 o'clock at night and I still have the touch-ups to do and I have to ceramic coat the whole car. So, uh, and detail it and do a bunch of other stuff. So. With that, I'm going to go ahead, I'll uh, grab my paint, I'll show you how I do the touch-ups, we'll knock that out. Uh, I'm also, before I do that, I'm going to do a full uh, isopropyl alcohol wipe of the car to get it ready for the uh, final coat, which will be the uh, ceramic coating. So, all right, let me go ahead and do that first. For the wipe down of the alcohol, I'm just using this 70% isopropyl alcohol, a new microfiber cloth. I will put this on here. 
uh, and basically wipe the entire car down. It'll dry. I did blow it off with my air compressor just to get all the, any residual dust off. All right, the alcohol wipe down is complete. That took about 20 minutes or so. Now let's talk about the touch-ups. So again, I've got the uh, factory paint here and I will show you how I do this. Set that down on the ground. Take this and I just lightly dab it. Try to do this while I'm. <laughs> All right, so that's my touch up. And that's it. Just gonna fill it in like that, that'll dry. Uh, it won't be nearly as obvious once it dries. I'll wipe off my handprints there, you can see. Um, and then I'll do the rest of the touch-ups. All right, the last step is going to be ceramic coating. So what I use is Armor Shield 9, uh, this stuff here, which is a nano ceramic coating. Uh, one bottle will do at least one car. Uh, and basically you've got this applicator pad here, then you've got the actual applicators themselves. So you take this, one side softer than the other, put it like this, put a few drops on it, wipe the car down. A little tiny bit goes a long way. Wipe down, again, I do it in sections, and then let it dry for a couple of minutes. They give you a really nice uh, microfiber, and then wipe it off, and you are good to go. Uh, I would wear gloves on this, so let me go ahead and get this applied onto the pad, and I'll just show you what it looks like going out of the car. Okay, so got a few drops on the pad, probably three or four drops, and you don't want to, like, go crazy rubbing it back and forth and you can see see the wet line there basically just want to do this it's kind of tough for me to video and watch what i'm doing at the same time but you get the point and you can see where it's going to leave those streaks that's perfectly fine i do this on everything on the, the outside of the car uh, except for like the tires i'll do the wheels too uh glass even uh things like this this um uh, plastic antenna. It really does a good job of uh, brightening up rubber as well. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't do it on the rubber trim, but I would do it on the glass. So um, pretty simple. Just do that again. Give it probably five minutes to dry. I just run around and do the entire car uh, with the ceramic coating and then come back through and wipe it off and you're done. So let me go ahead and do that. All right. It is uh, quarter to 12. Been a long night. I started at uh, 5, I don't know, 515, 530. Uh, ceramic coating is on, everything is wiped off. And again, not perfect, but considering the age of the car, it really came out nice. I've got the lights off where you really can see the reflection here. So um, what I'll do before I close out this video is in the morning, I'll bring the car outside in the sunlight before I go to this Cars and Coffee. That'll be the ultimate test. When the sun hits it, we'll see what it looks like. So I'll see you in the morning. All right, here we are the next morning out in the sun, which is the tell-all. <laughs> um, I probably still have a little bit of residual, uh, the ceramic, kind of the haze from the ceramic coating to wipe off. I'm going to this Cars and Coffee. When I get there, I'll give the car a quick detail. Uh, but again, I think everything came out really nice. Um, normally, when a car is like this out in the sun, you can see a lot of swirling, and especially when it's bright sun and it's uh, a black car but as you can see the car looks really nice so hopefully this video was helpful for you uh, if you have not already please subscribe and like and there will be more content coming on this car as well as the c32 and most importantly on the channel car Mizo. thanks very much guys talk to you soon